In the park where the Twin Towers once stood, the unveiling of a new memorial highlights the lingering impact of the September 11th attacks, particularly on first responders. Nearly 400 of them have died from 9-11 related illness so far. Thousands more are sick. At the ceremony, they mixed with dignitaries amid the slanted stones meant to honor them. Bridget Gormley's father, William, was a firefighter whose company was one of the first on the scene that day. Everybody initially had the 9-11 cough, the World Trade Center cough. It wasn't until 2016, though, that he was diagnosed with bladder cancer that killed him six months later. This memorial is shifting the narrative to where it needs to be shifted. Not as what, ha what happened, but what is happening. The Gormley family is still waiting for payment from the victim's compensation fund, which was set up to help survivors. You won't see any names written on this memorial. That's because the list of sick and dying is still growing and could soon eclipse the nearly 3,000 people who were killed on September 11th. That, as funds that were set aside by Congress to help victims, are drying up. It's estimated as many as a half million people were exposed to the toxic dust that filled the air for months after the attack. And it's not just first responders who are getting sick, but also those who volunteered, went to school, or worked in the area. The Barish and McGarry law firm now represents 12,000 people from all over the country whose illness has been linked to 9-11 exposure. And they say they hear from new victims every day. We're seeing many people in the 9-11 community who have not one, but two and three cancers. Doctors tell me they have never seen this before. In February, officials overseeing the victims' fund announced they were running out of money and would have to drastically cut payouts to victims. But advocates are already pushing Congress for more funding. We were lied to on September 16, 2001, when we were told the air was safe to breathe, the water was safe to drink. And yet now we're fighting for health care and compensation from the government, the very government who lied to us. A government that promised to never forget the horror and the courage seen that day, and a community who, with this memorial, is promising to remind them. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York.